In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every child of God here tonight. I will pray, O oh Lord, you make everyone special, unique, extraordinary in Jesus' name. Now our door is open. You will wipe all tears away. All sorrows are gone in Jesus' name. I pray tonight, everyone here, you will touch. Everyone here, you will heal. Everyone here, you'll deliver. Everyone here, you'll provide for. I pray you set every captive free in Jesus' name. And all our people, everywhere, south, north, middle belt, anywhere anyone is now, hearing the sound of my voice, I pray, Lord, that moment of the breakthrough will come for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we're standing here today on the threshold of victory. I will pray, O oh Lord, nobody will cry. Nobody will have a loss. Great, 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 mighty things you'll do for everyone in Jesus' name. As we hear your word now, your word will come in and faith will be born in every heart. And when it comes to time to pray, Lord, we pray the heavens will be opened. And all prayers are going to be answered. Signs and wonders tonight, miracles tonight, deliverances tonight, healings tonight, provision tonight. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. I read from verse 9. Then I read from verse 11. Then I'll go back again and read from verse 9. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 33. And you saw said, I have enough. And you saw said, I have enough. Come to verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. Do you see this in verse 9? Esau said, I have enough. Jacob said in verse 11, I have enough. I'm going to read everything now from verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. In verse 10, and Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Take here is still Jacob speaking. I pray thee, my blessing that is brought unto thee, because God has dealt graciously, wonderfully, abundantly with me. And because, and because, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. Tonight, we're talking about possessing enough for the present and for the future. And I look at you and I say, praise the Lord you are here tonight. Because from today, sufficiency, abundance, provision, all the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Possessing enough. For the present and for the future. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4. And I read from verse 18. And then I jump down to verse 19. Every promise we'll read about tonight is yours. And you're going to claim them. And the faithful God of heaven is going to fulfill them in your life in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 18. But I have all and abound 
I am full. Here is Paul, the apostle speaking, who apart from Esau, we have heard from Jacob, and now we're hearing from Paul, and very soon we're going to hear from you. Yeah. I have all and abound. I am full. Look at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. On every side, the Lord is going to pour his blessing upon you. In your life, you look to the right, you look to the left, you look in front, you look back. Everything around you will be fullness and abundance in Jesus' name. In First Kings chapter 5, and there I read from verse 4. First Kings chapter 5, verse 4. It says, but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. Every side you go out, you'll be full. You come in, you are going to be full. In your office, in the market, you are going to be full. When you travel, you are going to be full. Anywhere you find yourself, on every side, there's going to be the fullness and the abundance of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil or courage. Neither enemy nor a foe. Nothing will harm you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7, For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all thy works. There will be no farming, there will be no barrenness, there will be no dryness in the land. Because the favor of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God will be upon your life. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy, thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. He will be with you. Thou hast lacked nothing. You will not lack anything in Jesus' name. Possessing it all for the present and for the future. I'm coming back to this Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 9 once again. We're listening to this man that said, I have enough. His name is Esau. And Esau said, I have enough. My brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. You see, it was unfortunate for Esau because here comes Jacob. The Lord had blessed Jacob on every side. The promises of God have been yes and amen in the life of Jacob. He had enough and to spare. And now came to his brother and said, let's forget the past. And I come to you tonight and I say, let us forget the past. I say, let us forget the past. You see, between Jacob and Esau, they had hurt one another. And you know the story between Jacob and Esau. And Esau had been saying, I'm going to get him. I'm going to retaliate. And Jacob said, let's forget that. The past is gone. Now we have the future ahead of us. Well, everything I have, I'm going to give you this. And you said, no, no, don't give me anything. I have enough. And then look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. And it says, For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. It was saying, The Lord has preserved my life. I heard you wanted to kill me because that's what Esau said he was going to do. But the Lord protected that Jacob, he will protect you. He preserved Jacob, he will preserve your life. And now the preservation of God upon Jacob, upon the members of his family, upon all his inheritance, everything he had, we can see that. And he said, I saw God. I saw the face of God. I said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And in the previous chapter that I saw the face of God and that angel, and now I'm seeing you, and I'm still seeing the face of God and the hand of, of God, therefore receive at my hand. I'm going to talk about Dada's preservation. Number three now is what we read in verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God has dealt graciously with me. 
He said, you know what, Esau? We've been separated for many years now, but every day of our absence, every week when we're absent, I've seen God. He has dealt graciously with me. And we're transferring that same blessing of Jacob upon you today. That every day of your life, from now till you see him face to face, he will deal graciously with you. And that's why Jacob now said, those words you used. I am the word, one that you used those words, saying, I have enough. And I want to declare to you that nobody is going to hinder your blessing. And you're going to have enough in Jesus' name. That's what I call prosperity and sufficiency. Number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. That's Esau. The profession of satisfaction. He said, I'm all right. He wasn't all right. I have enough. He didn't have enough. And Jacob wanted to be a blessing. He said, no, no. I don't need it. Of course, Esau, you need it. And you need your destiny to be changed. You need everything to be turned around in your life. But yeah, he was having profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Number two, the preservation of saints. I'm coming to Jacob now. I said, I'm coming to Jacob now. The Lord changed his name. He will change your name. He changed his nature. He'll change your nature. He'll, he changed his destiny. He will change his destiny. All the enemies of Jacob became his friends. All your enemies will become your friends in Jesus' name. Internally, God will change you. In your family, God will change you. The situation around God will change everything. In your place of what God will change everything. That you, you will not even recognize yourself anymore because you were poor, now you are going to be rich. You were sorrowful, now you are going to be happy. You were barren, but now you are fertile and you are productive in Jesus' name. You were a failure, but now you are a success. You were lonely, but now you are a man or a woman of fellowship. Because God is changing everything about you from today in Jesus' name. The preservation of saints through divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life. And it is starting tonight. By the time you get home, if there were people that didn't come to the service tonight, when they see, they'll not recognize you anymore. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. The preservation of sin through divine intervention. Number three, prosperity and sufficiency. Huh, you are coming there. I said you are coming there. Prosperity and sufficiency with divine investments. With divine investments. You will make an investment in the kingdom of God and God will make investment in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Look at that in Genesis chapter 33. Genesis 33 and in verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And that's what is called contentment. Cont he said, I'm all right. I'm content. I'm satisfied. I'm saying, Jacob, you lost the birthright. I'm all right. You lost the blessing of Isaac. I'm all right. Divine inheritance is not yours. I'm all right. You know the people that say they are all right. They are all right without salvation. They are all right without the new birth. They are all right without the names in the book of life. They are all right without the joy of the... They are all right without eternal life. They are all right without the protection of the almighty God. They are all right without the ministration of angels. They are all right without a miracle. You will not be all right until a miracle takes place in your life. And this night, you'll, now you'll really be all right. I said you'll be all right tonight in Jesus' name. When the miracle hand of God touches you, that's there, you'll be all right. When your healing comes tonight, it is there, you'll be all right. When God takes the one limitation lack away from your life tonight, then you'll be all right. When God takes away that incurable disease, it's only there, you'll be all right. When the hand of Jacob comes upon you, when the hand of Jesus comes upon you, and then he shovels to you, and then parts across to, across to you, all the blessings of heaven, it is there, you'll be all right. But if you don't have Jesus, tell 
tell me what's your joy. If you don't have salvation, tell me what's your joy. If you've lost the birthright, tell me what's your joy. If you have not born again, tell me what's your joy. If your name is not in the book of life, tell me what's your joy. If angels are not serving you like they serve the people of God, tell me what's your joy. If you don't have a bank account in heaven, tell me what's your joy. If the promises of God are not yours, tell me what's your joy. But when you come tonight and say, I know I'm not all right, I need Jesus in my heart. I need forgiveness in my life. I need the salvation in my life. Then you'll be all right in Jesus' name. But you know, look at Esau. Esau said, I am all right. Hey, don't say that. Let Jacob tell you, I met angels of God. They'll say, ladder that connected heaven to earth. Let me tell you the story. Don't say you're all right. And then the Lord bless me. I've been to Laban. And then every day God has been gracious. And I want to pass that grace unto you. I want to pass that mercy unto you. That I've, I've seen miracle. I've got wife. I've got children. I've seen miracle. I've seen the angels, the host of God. And he followed after me. Me, let me introduce you to them only then will you be all right and then i saw god face to face and my life is preserved and i wrestled with that angel at night let me introduce you to warfare spiritual warfare and that victory then you'll be all right but he so said no don't tell me anything i'm all right i pray you'll not be like that in jesus name I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 12. This man who said, I'm all right. Satisfaction without divine inheritance. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm reading there from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator. I will not be a fornicator. Or no profane person. I will not be a profane person as Esau. When somebody invites you into the blessing, of it, I'm all right. Somebody invites you to a church like this, I'm all right. And somebody invites you to come into the blessing of the Almighty, the abundance of the blessings of God upon your life. And he says, come on, I'm going to shower this upon you. Because Jesus Christ said, the thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have that life in abundance. No, I'm all right. That's like Esau. I will not be like Esau. But you come to the Lord and I say, oh Lord, I, want, I don't want to be like Esau. I want to have divine inheritance, divine impartation, divine inspiration, divine revelation. Look at this. That you'll not be like Esau, who for one morsel of bread sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Look at the man that said, I'm all right. I have enough. It was rejected. And he didn't come into the blessing. Then it says, For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought it. In, then he gave up. You, you know many people, that's why he said, I have enough. He said, maybe that's all right for me. Maybe that's my destiny. Maybe I'm not supposed to have it. Maybe it is not my luck. The provision of God will be yours. And you'll not sit back and say, maybe I'm not supposed to have it. Of course, you're supposed to have it. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord has called you into blessing. You are going to enter into that blessing in Jesus' name. Let me come now to number two this way. I, I, want, to talk, I want to talk about this man. His name is Jacob. I said his name is Jacob. And then his name was changed from Jacob to tell me. Israel, the Lord will change everything about you. And anything negative will become positive in Jesus' name. Everything that is upside down, God will put it right side up in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's look at the man. In Genesis chapter 33, Genesis chapter 33, Genesis chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 10. From verse 10, it says, And Jacob said, and Jacob said, and Jacob said, You open your mouth and you proclaim your own blessing. You open your mouth and you declare the promise of God upon your life. And Jacob said, look at what he said. He said, Nay, I pray thee now, I have found grace in thy sight. He said, Now everywhere I've been going since I left many years ago, I met Laban, I found grace. And then I got to the well, I found grace. And then I came out of that place and Laban ran after me. He wanted to hurt me, but God said, don't touch that man. He's my child. I found grace. And since I've been from step to step and day after day, I've been finding grace. And the Lord is saying that anywhere you go, you'll find grace. 
you'll find mercy. Before you get there, those closed doors will be open to you in Jesus' name. And so he said, I have found grace in thy sight. You'll find grace in the sight of all your enemies. The people that said, come what me, I'm going to take on that man, I'm going to take on that woman, I'm going to cut him off. When you get to them, they'll not be able to do it. You'll find grace and mercy and happiness and joy in their sight in Jesus' name. He said, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Can I tell you the antecedent to that? The background of that. How is it that this man of God was preserved? was protected at Esau, coming with 400 men, could not touch him. Can I show you? It's because of divine intervention. Divine intervention. Look at Genesis chapter 32. I read from verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Hey, this, is how, this is how this man Jacob became preserved became protected because in the previous chapter while he left the house of Laban and was going like this before he got to Esau before he saw his enemy he saw the angels of God when you see God before you see the enemy your enemy is paralyzed when the angels of God meet you before you ever see your enemies all those enemies are paralyzed when they when these agents of God from heaven and these ministers of God from heaven when they see you before you ever see anything negative all those negative things are neutralized in Jesus name and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him and when Jacob saw them he said this is God's host and he calls the name of that place Mahanaim. And then it says, Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Let's jump down to verse 6. In verse 6, and the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he came to meet thee. And 400 men with him. He wanted to finish Jacob. Nobody will be able to finish you. No matter how many people they gather together, all those people, conspirators against your life and against your destiny, God will scatter them in Jesus' name. And they were told in verse 7, in verse 7, and then Jacob was greatly afraid, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and the herds, and the camels into the into two bands and then look at verse 24 see what he began to do he began business with god we have business with god tonight i said we have business with god tonight i will not let you go except you bless me i will not let you go except you bless me tonight must be your night because it says from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of god sovereign violence and the and the and the and the violent take it by force. Jacob said tonight, I'm going to have it. And you are saying tonight, I am going to have it. My breakthrough is tonight. My healing is tonight. My miracle is tonight. My deliverance is tonight. I'm go not going to let you go except to bless me. You know, some people say, when God wants, then God will do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because uh, from the days of John the Baptist until tonight, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You are going to have it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, and Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. Let me go for the day breaketh. Well, the miracle has not happened yet, and the angel said, Let me go. Will you let him go? The, 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 the miracle has not occurred and the provision has not come and the way the door has not been opened and then the angel said let me go and Jacob said you go look at what he said we're looking at that in verse 26 and he said I will not let thee go I will not let thee go and that man determined the day of his blessing 
that man determine the time of his blessing. The angel would have gone, but this man prevailed over the angel. You will prevail. When you prevail in prayer, you have prevailed over your enemy. When you prevailed in prayer, you have prevailed over all negative circumstances in your life. When you prevail in prayer, you have prevailed over all those circumstances walking in your life. He said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, promotion. I said promotion. As a prince, before he got to prayer, it was just like ordinary, it was just Jacob. But now he was Israel. A change had come. Before you came, how did you come? Sorrowful? Sad? Me? Look at my condition. Before you live here tonight, the joy of the Lord. Miracles bring joy. Healings bring joy. Deliverances bring joy. Answered prayer brings joy. Testimony brings joy. You are taking one home tonight in Jesus' name. As a prince, as thou power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. And thou hast prevailed. And thou hast prevailed. That's how that man, Jacob, had the victory. That's why I was not telling Esau. He said, I've seen your face. Like I see the face of an angel. And now you cannot hurt me. Nobody will be able to hurt you from tonight. Preservation, the preservation of saints through divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm 34, Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 34, we're looking at verse 9. The Lord is coming into your life right now. He's changing everything changeable, everything shakeable. He's been shaking out of your life right now. And by the time you live here tonight, that thing has happened already. I said it has happened already. All the negative reports you've got before about your health and about your place of work and about your wife and about your husband. All those negative reports you've got about your children. Before you leave here tonight, it is changing already in Jesus' name. We're looking at you from Psalm 34 verse 9. It says, so fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them. There's no lack, there's no loss, there's no sorrow for them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight. I said, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight, and there's this assurance for you and for me, that they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want, shall not lose any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life? Anybody desiring life here tonight? Abundant life here tonight, sufficient life here tonight, long life here tonight, eternal life here tonight. Is this what man is he that desires life and loveth and loveth and loveth and loveth? How many do you love many days? You'll have them in Jesus' name. He says, and loveth many days that he, he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil. And I, and I leave from speaking up, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Thank God his eyes are upon you. I said his eyes are upon you. And his ears are open unto their cry. Tonight, all your cries the Lord will hear. All your prayers the Lord will hear. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Anybody trying to do evil against your life, the face of the Lord will be against them in Jesus' name. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, the righteous pray, the righteous, and they talk to God. And the Lord heareth, and, and he delivers them out of how many troubles? How many troubles? How many troubles? All your troubles you are delivered. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It has happened already in Jesus' name. 
Look at Psalm 37, Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 28, because of divine intervention. That's how God comes to intervene for you. That's why he is mine. The devil cannot touch you again. He is mine. The evil spirits cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Esau, with his 400 men, cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Because of that, all those paths of darkness will not be able to touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, verse 28, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his sins. They are preserved forever. You are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and the seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. The Lord will be with you. In the day, in the night, everywhere you are, wonderful protection secured protection in second timothy chapter 4 in verse 17 it says notwithstanding the lord stood with me the lord stood with me if the lord is standing by you and standing with you what else do you need what else do you need maybe some men forsake you as to their laws but the lord is going to stand by you and then it says and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and then he says that all the gentiles might hear and i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion you are delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work in the night and in the day the lord will deliver you from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I come to number three now, prosperity. Everybody say prosperity. prosperity. All losses are taken away from your life. Every lack is taken away from your life. Living from hand to mouth that is taken away in Jesus' name. You'll be head, you'll not be tail. There'll be promotion, there'll not be demotion. There'll be success, there'll not be failure. There'll be victory, there'll not be defeat. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 11. Genesis chapter 33. We're looking at verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my, breath, my blessing that, that, that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. And because I have enough. And because I have enough. And because don't confess anything negative anywhere you go you wake up in the morning praise the lord this is the day the lord has made i'll rejoice and be glad in because today i have you know you get to the place of work and they say they are retrenching people and then you say praise the lord i'm not among the least they're retrenching because today i have enough and then they said you know there is epidemic and this is happening and that is happening and everybody is dying this one dying this way a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by the left hand side then you say praise the lord because today i have enough you're going to the market and then they say do you know that you know customers are no more coming because of the price of this and price of that and this one has gone up and this one and the customers are no more coming and then you are spreading all your wares you are going to say you say Praise the Lord. I'm going to sell this today. I'm going to sell that today. I'm going to sell that today. Because today I have enough. They say we don't know what is happening. Nobody is, you know, getting pregnant in this street, in this community. Maybe some wicked people are there. They said as long as they're living there in that street, nobody is going to get pregnant. You say, my wife, get ready. I said, wife, get ready. Because today I have enough. The Lord will open the way for you every day of your life. In Jesus' name. Hey, let's come to Jacob, your senior brother here. I said Jacob is your senior brother here. 
because as everything was changed in his life, everything is going to be changed for the better in your life. He says, take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God has dealt wonderfully, graciously with me, and because I have enough. Anybody there? I said anybody there? I, keep, I didn't hear, I only see hand. I only see you. I say, say it with your mouth. I have enough. You'll have enough in Jesus' name. I want to interview Jacob for a moment. I want to say, how did you come to that point? Show me the way. Show me the way. How did you come to the point you have enough? And Jacob said, I will tell you. Let him tell us now how he came to have enough. If you do what he did, you are going to have enough. I said you are going to have enough. Look at Genesis chapter 28. This is what he did. This is what brought him to have enough. We're told in Genesis chapter 28. And I'm reading there from verse 20. Genesis 28 verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had nothing. That time he had no wife. That time he had no child. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had no peace of land. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he didn't have any flock. And Jacob vowed a vow. He had nothing in his son. And when he was at the place of having nothing, no wife, no children, no land, no house, nothing at all, only one stick he had. He was going all the done. He had no companion. He had no friend. But Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. He wasn't even sure at that time of raiment to put on. He wasn't sure at that time of any food he will eat. He said, but if the Lord will be with me while I'm going on this journey and then God will give me food and God will give me clothes to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. That's what he did. He said, the Lord will be my God. The Lord will be my God. And so make up your mind and say, the Lord will be my God. He'll be my healer. He'll be my provider. He'll be my redeemer. He'll be my deliverer. He'll be my protector. He'll be in front of me. He'll be at my back. He will surround me. Underneath me will be the everlasting arms. When I get into trouble, the Lord will be my God. When there's no friend, the Lord will be my God. When all things surround me and I'm confused, the Lord will be my God. On Sunday, I'm going to wake up and go to church because the Lord will be my God. From Monday, I'm going to attend Bible study. The Lord will be my God. And when anything happens, I'm going to be thinking about my God, my God, the Lord will be my God. If you make up your mind, that's how Jacob did it. Then he came to a point, he said, I have enough. Because from the moment, from the day I made the Lord my God, everything turned around in my life. Everything will turn around in your life in Jesus' name. He said, I'm not looking at what I have now, what I don't have, if God will go with me. And then he'll bring me back to my father's house. This God will be my God. In verse 22, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. He said, it's not only that the Lord will be my God, I'm going to build God and habitation. That thing the Lord is going to provide for me. And this place will be God's house. And then he said, and of all that thou shalt give me I will surely give the taste unto thee the two things that number one three things actually number one this God will be my God you see your God I said you see your God a father which art in heaven I would be thy name thy kingdom come when that kingdom comes in your heart because except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God when you enter into that kingdom and Jesus becomes your savior and the Holy Ghost your comforter and this God of heaven becomes your heavenly father that's the first step and thank God for those who have taken that step and if you have not taken that step yet tonight this God will be your God I said this God will be your God he didn't take Jacob time he just said God you are now my God God, you are now my God. You are my creator. You have become my savior. You have become my Lord. You become my Lord, my redeemer. And when you make up your mind, Jesus Christ died for me. He shared his blood for me. And from now on, Satan will not be my Lord. From now on, evil speech will not be my Lord. From now on, occultism will not be my Lord. From now on, all those Jews will not be my God. But Jesus is now my savior. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This God. 
Lord, will be my Lord. You have taken the first step. Welcome, welcome into the kingdom. And when you enter the kingdom like that, something else is taking place. Then he said, this stone will be God's house. This, what does that mean? Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. You're making up your mind. I'm going to do something. I'm going to provide an habitation for the Lord my God. Look at this in Exodus chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 2. The Lord is my strength. Give me a good amen. amen. And it's my song. Another amen. amen. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. That means that you make your house the house of God. And whatever we cannot do in the house of God, you're not doing that place. Say, this is the house of God. That's what Jacob said. Jacob said, this place where I find myself, it will be God's house. I'm going to make God an habitation. He said, God has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him and habitation. Let me show you one man. This is how the blessing comes. In 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And I'm reading there from verse 10. This is how you have the blessings of God, the abundance of God. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, so David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gittite. That's the ark of the Lord that represented the presence of God for the children of Israel. And David took that ark to the house of Obed Edom. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. You see why God blessed Jacob? Because he said this place will be God's house. You have a house, you have some city room, there are some uh, things. Uh, we can make that a church. There can be a church there where the presence of God is every Sunday and every Monday and every Thursday. And say, This place, the house where I live, this place, the, where I, the place I reside, this place, the place I lay my head on, is also going to be God's house. It's going to be God's habitation. It will, be, it will happen in Jesus' name. They are telling our leaders to say, I'm surrendering, like Obed Edom, I'm surrendering my house to be the house of God. I'm surrendering my yard to be the habitation of God. I'm surrendering my city to be the habitation of God. I'm telling you the blessings the Lord is going to bring upon your life. You will not be able to contain in Jesus' name. Overflowing. Overflowing. Abundance. It will run over in your life in Jesus' name. I look at look at Romans chapter 16, Romans chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my help pass in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. That's how people become blessed because they do like Jacob. They said, this place where I live will be God's habitation and God's house. Number one, this God will be my God. This God is your God. I said, this God is your God. Number two, your house becomes the house of the house of the house of that will be the house of prayer. It will be the house of preaching. It will be the house of miracles and wonders. It will be the house of revival in Jesus' name. Number three, Jacob said, of all that you give me, I'm going to give a tenth unto thee. Wonderful. I'm going to give a tenth unto thee. That man knew how to have the blessings of God, abundance of God. Is that. That's why he had sufficiency and prosperity because of divine investments. Investments. We're looking at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3. We're looking at verse 10. This is how you are going to have the abundance. It is coming. I said it is coming. Look at verse 10 of Malachi chapter 3. Bring ye all the tithes into, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here we says the Lord of hosts. Who is talking here? I said who is talking here? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Praise the Lord. You are the blessed person the Lord is talking to. 
You are the prospering person the Lord is talking to. You are the protected person the Lord is talking to. You are the man, the woman of abundance the Lord is talking to tonight. Let me read it to you. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, he says, and prove me now. Here we says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, they are going to be open. And for you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's the word enough, begin enough. You have enough, you have more than enough. You have more than enough. And then in verse 11, it says, And I will rebuild the devourer for your sins, and it shall not devour, it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of us, and all the nations of the earth, and all the nations shall call you blessed. All the nations shall call you Let's personalize it now. All the nations shall call me blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. And this is your portion. Deuteronomy chapter 28, it was Jacob's turn, now it is your turn. I said, now it is your turn. And shall come to pass, Deuteronomy chapter 28, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God, whose God is this God? I said, whose God is this God? The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Are you tired? I said, blessed you'll be in the city. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. In all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Did I hear an amen there? And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thee to give unto thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heaven to give rain unto thy land in its season and to bless 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 all the works of thy hand and thou shalt learn unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow and the Lord shall make thee the hedge the hedge the hedge and not the tail and thou shalt be above only. Where are they? I said, where are they? Sit you down. I said, where are they? You be the head. You not be the tail. Then say, you'll be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Your blessing has begun. I said, your blessing has begun. But we just praise the Lord. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. No sickness will stay in your body. No calamity will stay in your home. No oppression will stay on your children. No poverty, no lack, no loss. 
Because today, today, the Lord is calling you to a covenant. A covenant of grace, a covenant of mercy, a covenant of provision. A covenant of supply or sufficiency. Congrats. Congratulations. Because the Lord is calling you. It is abundance today. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. Make your promise and make your vow before the Lord. This God will be my God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, the joy of the Lord is in your heart right now. Your doors are opened. The gates are opened. Floods of miracle. Floods of healing. Floods of provision. Come into your life and your family right now. Amen. Let's bow and eyes close. Let's bow and eyes close. Put down your hands. Thank you very much. God bless you. You've got it already. It's bad and nice close. This God will be your God. And if for the very first time in your life you're saying this God will be my God, I'm turning away from myself. I'm giving my life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that Jesus will be my Savior. He'll be inside me. He'll be around me. He'll be before me. He'll be behind me. He'll surround me. And nothing will be able to touch me from the enemy camp. And you say, now this God will be my God. And you're saying from the depths of your heart that Jesus Christ died for you to take away your sin. And then it becomes your Savior tonight. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. I have a special prayer for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for you that you're saying this God will be my God. This God will be my God. God. No more idol worship, no more sinning, no more adultery, no more fornication, no more drunkenness, no more smoking. This God will be my God. Where are you? Wave that hand at me if you're serious about that. Keep the hand up and just close your eyes and pray a special prayer for you now. This God will be my God. Can we say that with them? Ah, say it with them. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all the people who have raised up their hands and they say, this God will be my God. I pray, Lord, be their God tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that all the sins they're leaving behind will not attach itself again unto them anymore. You separate them from their sin and you separate their sins from them and you cleanse them, you forgive them, you wash them, you totally take everything away from them in Jesus' name. The condemnation of their sin, take it away. Oh Lord, I pray that forgiveness and mercy and grace and love will come into the earth right now in Jesus' name. Give them, Lord, the assurance that now they are saved. Let the Spirit of the Lord bear witness in the earth right now. Their sins are taken away in Jesus' name. And give them victory. Give them victory. Give them victory over all their past sins in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the joy of salvation and the peace that comes with salvation and the victory that comes with salvation will come to them right now. Confirm each and every one of them, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Angels rejoice in heaven when sinners come to the Lord. If you will rejoice like angels, you do something different. Amen. Ah, I'm sure you think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. You think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Amen. Now. I said now. Now, now. Praise the Lord. Tears wiped away. Yes. Sorrow taken away. Yes. Regret taken away. Yes. All problems taken away. Yes. Sicknesses taken away. Yes. Afflictions taken away. Yes. Bad luck taken away. Yes. Poverty taken away. Yes. We're praying now. We're praying now. Catch it now. Catch it now. It's mine. I said, Catch it now. It is yours. Father, in the name of Jesus. 
We just want to praise you. We want to glorify you. We want to exalt you. We want to celebrate you. Lord Jesus, how wonderful you are. How marvelous you are. We thank you, Lord, because you have opened the door and you have opened the floodgates for all the people of God who are here now and those who are hearing my voice. Oh, Lord, I pray breakthrough, yeah. abundance, yeah. great supply yeah. unto everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray any sickness there from the top of the head to the lowest patch in the foot. Oh Lord, I pray, take it away in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you, be opened in Jesus' name. Those dim eyes, in Jesus' name, be cleared in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears, I pray the Lord will touch the ears right now. And I pray those deaf ears will be opened in Jesus' name. Anything swelling in the swelling in the stomach, swelling on the neck, swelling at the back, I command all that swelling and of near to you, get out in Jesus' name. Kidneys that are not functioning, come alive in Jesus' name. Livers that are not functioning, come alive in Jesus' name. In the, your spiritual system, your lungs that are not working, I pray that the Lord right now will touch you. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Any pain, any infirmity, any kind of sickness in your body from the top to the bottom, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. As we're going out of this place tonight, no sickness will follow you. No infirmity will follow you. No pain will follow you. All that have suffered until this time, I pray right now, it will be cut off from you in Jesus' name. And for those who have people in the hospital, a father, a mother, a wife, a child, a husband, that you have in the hospital, as you are thinking about them right now, I send the power of the Lord after them. Lord, I pray on that hospital bed, instantaneously, miraculously, touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. And those who have anybody in a mental institution, they are insane, and they have mental problem, I pray now, Lord, send your power right there. And I pray you deliver them from that mental institution in Jesus' name. And those who have any loved one behind the bars in the prison, Lord, I pray, get them out of that place. Give them their freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that all the blessings your people need to shower upon your people. Poverty, I command you, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Those who are jobless, I pray, this very month, your job will come to you. Poverty will live your life. Prosperity has come. Abundant supply has come. Lord, I pray for those who have been looking up to you. They want to get married. They say this and they say, and it's never possible. This is a year of multiple marriages in this church. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that those who have not been able to make it, this year they will make it. And those who have married and then for one reason or the other, there has not been any children, miracle babies. Or oh, you're right there, I command right now. Hey, have your miracle baby in Jesus' name. And oh, my sister right there, I command. Have your miracle baby in Jesus' name. Our students who are here, there's no failure this year. There's no failure this year. There's no failure this year. You will be the head, you will not be the tail in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, as your people go out, let blessings run after them. Let miracles run after them. Let deliverances run after them. All the paths of darkness clear away before them in Jesus' name. You turn to the right, blessing. You turn to the left, blessing. You go forward, blessing. Everywhere you move around, blessing. And I pray that when that celebration day comes, you will celebrate. You will celebrate. You will celebrate. And your testimony will lead other people into miracles. Oh Lord, I just pray as your people go now. Your miracle power is following our time right now. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, and the people of God said, finally the people of God said,